The following footage was all gathered from photographic outings at an organic apple orchard. The orchard is surrounded by natural vegetation spanning along the Yarra River in Victoria. The area is public land located in the heart of suburbia. This setting allows me to video small introduced game animals such as rabbits, hares and foxes in their natural environment. Rabbits were introduced to Australia in the 1850s where numbers quickly increased and rabbits became adapted to the harsh Australian bush. Rabbits rely heavily on their sight and sense of smell to avoid predation from other feral species such as foxes and cats. Like most introduced animals, rabbits cause significant damage to the environment and native wildlife. Forest systems known as worms are the holes in which rabbits live. These networks and tunnels cause serious erosion to the countryside and ruin large areas of the Australian bush. The European brown hare is larger in size than a rabbit with black tipped ears and tail. The hare does not burrow like a rabbit, however it lives under shrubs and low-lying bushes above ground. The hare prefers open pastures and fields, such as those provided by orchards. Hares are relaxed feeders, enjoying grasses, shoots and bark. Hares rely heavily on their keen sense of smell and hearing. Hares often sit in the shade of a tree, or in this case, royal trees, during the middle of the day, as they wait for the cooler afternoon, in which they will feed once again. The hare usually become most active between January to August when they enter the main breeding period. The term March Madness becomes fitting as hares become extremely active. During this time males can be seen as they chase females in an attempt to mate. Like humans, foxes can differ in appearance. Some colorations are dark greyish silver and even black. Others can appear a light yellow or orange while some foxes boast magnificent red coats, fitting for the name Red Fox. The Red Fox was introduced in Australia during the 1830s. Fox distribution in South Eastern Australia coincides with rabbit populations. Naturally, rabbits are the desired prey of the cunning and elusive fox. Foxes are highly opportunistic and adaptable, being considered omnivorous as they can eat meat, fruit or berries. The abundance of rabbits and native wildlife in which they prey on and apples which fall from the fruit trees when ripe provide a staple part of the fox's diet at the orchard. The environment and lack of pressure from humans ensures that their habitat is perfect for reproducing. Fox's breeding season begins as of June and can continue throughout spring until the end of summer. Male and female foxes will pair and develop their own territories, often in the area supporting the most food sources. The pair will then find dens, which are usually in the form of underground burrows. Dens are usually located on the slight slope of a hill, surrounded by plenty of undergrowth, such as blackberries. Here is an example of a den site. Fox pups or kits are born blind and deaf and extremely dependent on their mother's milk. Eventually they grow in confidence and leave the safety of the den to venture into the outside world. Here a number of fox pups fight over a large rabbit caught by their parents. The adult foxes will bring back a range of food to the young pups which wait their arrival at the den. Carcasses such as kangaroos and other large wildlife can be stripped of limbs and taken back to the hungry pups. Rabbits, mice, lizards, frogs and small birds also make unfortunate meals. 
It is this opportunistic nature of the fox which enables it to survive in the Australian bush. Being a bow hunter and keen native wildlife photographer, I find it natural to observe animals whilst enabling them to behave naturally in their environments. The inquisitive nature of foxes also produces many insightful moments. Honing my skills of whistling foxes is an enjoyable exercise as I imitate the sound of an injured and struggling rabbit. This seems to get a reaction from most foxes if done correctly. Ensuring a steady breeze of the wind is in your favour. In most cases, I would love to have the combination of bow and arrow and broadhead to meet the fox when it runs into the call. However, as this footage was taken on public land, the foxes are shot with camera and video camera. Nonetheless, whistling foxes in this environment makes for some fun times. Open fields and sloping valleys make for great locations to call foxes, giving the caller great lanes of vision to spot incoming foxes. Being uphill from the incoming fox can also pose to your advantage, as they have to look for you. Ensuring you position yourself in front of a tree, rocky outbreak, shrubs or bushes is essential in remaining undetected to approaching foxes. Keep this in mind when selecting areas to whistle, and keep movement to a minimum. Here are a few examples of foxes coming to the whistle. Whistling in foxes can not only bring them closer, but can also give the hunter or photographer a chance to stop the fox in one location for some time, often, as in this case, under 15 metres. This can allow for a well-placed arrow to take flight, or a digital camera to capture some interesting shots. When fox whistling, always be flexible. A range of calls produces different vocalisations, which may attract foxes in your area, and more importantly, keep them interested at close range. I carry four different predator calls, which all have different results and appeals to foxes. Hello, uh, well, I'm just going to show you a few whistles that I use when calling foxes. Um, each differ in uh, the sound that they make but each are effective in calling foxes, so you just got to really get out there and try which one works for you, and yeah, go from there. So, first is just the old tin whistle. Then uh, we've got the old predator call, it's just made out of wood. Um, we've got a little squeaker, which is good for close range. Just... And then we've got this, which uh, is really good for, it's a scotch game call. It's good for getting the sound out there from a few hundred metres away, getting foxes to come from long range.
Yeah, so that's it. They're the four different whistles that I use when calling foxes. Um, like I said, you've just got to get out there and try which one works for you. They might all work in your area, but um, yeah, you just got to get out there. Here a fox comes into the whistle despite a neighbour's dog barking only 50 metres away. This demonstrates the fox's instinct to get a free meal and the effectiveness of a range of whistles. Whistling foxes is not only effective for open areas, it can also be used to call foxes out of thick scrub. In the environments with low pressure from predators and humans, foxes bed and sun themselves in open areas during the day. Areas where foxes feel threatened will lead to bedding underground in dens or burrows. Here are a few examples of foxes bedding in open surroundings. All photographs and footage were taken by Aiden Doomsis. This video is sponsored by Game Hunter. All equipment such as fox whistles and camouflage clothing were provided by Game Hunter. The store is located at 220 Cooper Street, Epping, Victoria 3076. To contact Game Hunter, please call on 0394013308. Or email info at gamehunter.com.au. For online shopping, head to www.gamehunter.com.au. Thanks for watching Rabbits, Hares, and Foxes in Suburban Environments. I hope you enjoyed this production.